Hi, my name is Alec Evans, and I and many of you will look down and see that my name is spelled A-L-E-X, and you will conclude justifiably that it should be pronounced Alex. But you say your name however your mother pronounced it, and my mother said Alec. Over the course of my life, I came to realize that people from certain areas pronounce this name in this way, people from middle Georgia and western North Carolina in particular. I was explaining this one day to someone who, had, who was a former aide to former Congressman Alec McMillan from Western North Carolina, and he told me that this was the Scottish pronunciation of the name. That made sense since my mother was a Strickland from Pike County, Georgia, and definitely of Scottish heritage. So my name is Alec Evans, and I have the honor to serve on your vestry. I serve as, on the Stewardship Committee. And we are the group that you hear from all too often to ask you to prayerfully consider your pledge to the church. I won't belabor this, but our bi church's bylaws require the fiscal responsibility of only being able to budget 95% of pledged income. So if you don't pledge, but you intend to give to the church each year, and in fact you do make those gifts, those can't be counted in the budget. So while the revenue might come in, the vestry can't count on the funds for budgeting and planning purposes. All this is to say, please, please consider making your pledge for 2021 if you have not already done so. I'm also a lay reader for the church, and many of you have never seen me because I serve at 8 a.m. at the 8 a.m. service, which like is like a meeting of old, dedicated friends who gather religiously to early on Sundays to worship. I know that I joined those folks and probably all the rest of you in hoping and praying that someday soon we will all be able to gather for worship inside the church sanctuary and to sit together as we strive to grow through faith. In fact, faith is what I want to leave you with today in this devotional. I was walking into the house on Saturday and I happened to see the most beautifully formed camellia bloom on a bush just to the left of the walkway. It was freezing outside, but this beautiful white flower was shining in the morning light. As we can, it occurred to me that while we struggle with many issues, the pandemic, economic upheaval, racial and ideological division, and on and on, if we look around, there are clear signs of God's presence in our daily lives. There might not be a bright light or an angel appearing from above, but if you consider your life, the day that the Lord has made, the blessings of your family, friends, your community, your church, you'll find lots of evidence of the presence of a higher power in our lives. I ask only that you think about it. Even if you're in despair, it might cause you to reach for the hand that is reaching for you. They, we, are there for you. It just requires a little faith. Some of you knew my father who passed away now almost 30 years ago. He took the time to write down his philosophy and to weave it into the story of his life. If any of you have an inclination to do something like this for your children, I urge you to do so. Your, ch your children will know your passions and perspectives. But this is a way that they can preserve those thoughts for your grandchildren and their children's children. It's been a blessing and a resource to me. In a passage on the first page of his 80-page manuscript, here, here's what he said about faith. Why do you live when you would rather die than to have to face your own image? Why do you survive when all the rest of your eight-man torpedo crew are blasted away? Why do you come to an unbelievable halt at the brink of a precipice? Only God in His wisdom knows. I know that only he knows. Let's get something straight right now. Any human being who lives for 60 odd years on this earth and denies the existence of the higher authority that man calls God is, if not stupid, at least arrogant. If you knew him, you knew he didn't mince words. And this passage is no exception. But it illustrates that he's taken the time to step back from the harrowing experiences of his life to recognize God's presence in many critical moments. I leave you today with this short verse and the clear conviction that God is present in your life. 
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. God bless you, and God bless the Church of the Advent.